My name is Alice Hill. I am a research fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. My office is based in Washington, D.C. Wonderful. I am honored to have the opportunity to chat with you. Now, we are at the Silicon Valley Energy Summit at Stanford, and you were on a panel, and you shared some very interesting insights that I value, and the group also shared some insights that I value. What do you believe are the three most important insights you shared with this audience? In the face of actions by President Trump to pull back from climate efforts led by President Obama, we are seeing a wellspring of activity in the private sector with state and local governments, which will help greatly on sustainability. I work in the field of resilience. Uh, that will be more challenging without the federal uh, science to support local communities. The impacts of climate change are with us now. This is not an issue for the distant future. We're experiencing a heat wave as we speak, uh, and those kind of heat events, as well as uh, increased sea level rise and other impacts will continue going forward. All right, now you took the positive approach. You mentioned setbacks by President Trump with respect to addressing the climate change issue. And you then said there are opportunities now for the states, for the cities, the counties, and maybe uh, the public sector to step forward and address the growing challenge of increased greenhouse gases in the air. Is that right? Yes, I think there are increased opportunities because the federal government will be a less of a player for the foreseeable future as indicated by President Trump. And do you think that's good? I think it's better if we were all working together. This is a whole of government, whole of community response needed for the scope of impacts that we will continue to uh, experience in a, on an accelerating basis. So my preference would be we would have continued with the federal government and the state and locals would have built more capacity. Okay. In the absence of that, they are stepping forward. And, and then you said something about sustainability. Your area of, of concentration at the uh, Hoover yes. is? Resilience. Resilience. Okay. And what in the world does that mean? Resilience means that in the face of a serious risk, you prepare in advance, uh, and then during the event, uh, you take steps to protect yourself. And then hopefully that response uh, will put you in a better, and your preparations will mean that you can bounce back more quickly, which gets your economy humming again, is better for uh, people's uh, health, better for them staying in the community if you look at an event like a Sandy or Katrina or even a wildfire. Okay, so I could say, and you challenge me, we have, we're still in the era of sustainability, but we now recognize that that era or that zeitgeist is not good enough for how our situation is changing. And now we need to start focusing more than ever on resilience to be able to spring back, prepare for the hits and spring back for them. I couldn't agree more. One of our founding fathers uh, had an expression. He was uh, Ben Franklin. You remember him from yes. so many of his uh, funny terms. Uh, he said that by failing to prepare, you were preparing to fail. And at this moment, we are not adequately preparing for the impacts of climate change that we are already experiencing and will accelerate uh, over time. We succeeded as the world to adopt the need for sustainability and thousands and thousands of heads of cities, governments around have hired people to work on sustainability programs. I know of hardly any city, county, state that has a director of resilience. Is it your job to help inform the policymakers, government officials, 
NGOs and others to help them realize we now, besides the Rockefeller Foundation, we now need to invest in people, processes, to be more resilient. Yes. I served as President Obama's special assistant, uh, special assistant to the president and senior director for resilience policy. I actually have resilience in my title. I was on the National Security Council. You might ask, why do they have someone leading a group working on building resilience policy? Because it is a security risk if we are not ready for catastrophic risks. So. This is a catastrophic risk posed by the impacts of climate change, and my job now at the Hoover Institution is continuing to work on helping communities uh, and in deepening our understanding of how we actually go about assisting communities, businesses, uh, and other countries in building resilience. And can you help me understand at least one concrete step you are taking to help the country, the cities, uh, adopt the concept of resilience and to move forward with plans to uh, help everyone be more resilient? So I have an initiative uh, that we will be hosting an event here at Stanford. I, I am partnering on behalf of the Hoover Institution with the Woods Institute and the Wilson Center. Uh, we are looking at coastal resilience, including choices about uh, where we put our infrastructure in the face of increasing uh, sea level rise. Uh, our hope is that we will find best practices that we can then share with communities. When I was at the White House, I actually uh, led the development of uh, seven executive orders, and uh, four of those dealt with catastrophic risks of drought, flooding. So the one, one standard required that uh, if you take federal money uh, to build in or near a floodplain, you must build higher. That's just a resilient message, uh, measure. Drought, we uh, established a long-term drought plan for the United States in the face of what was happening in California. We also worked on earthquakes, not a climate uh, risk. And wildfire, which is a big climate risk here, how do you build resiliently so that, in particular, federal facilities survive a wildfire? And the feds are then ready to help the communities get back. But if our own facilities as the federal government are wiped out, Hard for us to be there to uh, lend aid. All right. Would you state the date of the event at the Hoover Institute? Sep uh, it will actually be here at Stanford. It's September 18th and 19th. Uh, I think the, the full day event is September 19th. And if our viewers would like to go to our website to gain more information about it, where would they go? I believe the Woods Institute has posted it now. All right. So I Stanford wanna, Woods Institute. I want to say it's been wonderful. I've thank enjoyed you. meeting you, and I thank you for your information and the service you provide the nation and beyond. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, thank you. Thank you. And I just want to share.